Welcome to Jackal DIY and Tech. Today is April the 6th. I've just finished editing this video, which is about comparing six Core XY 3D printers. And I got this email about Artillery M1 Pro. This was from Geekbuying. So I went to the Geekbuying page, looked at some of the statistics, it looked okay. And then I searched up the company, which is the Artillery 3D. And this is on the EU page. As we can see, this is also a pre-order, just like the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. So these two can be comparable in that regard. So I will compare this one to the six printers that I have compared previously. And I'll just go based on the values that I've obtained in the previous video. This one is enclosed. It has the biggest build plate out of all of them. Though if this is also a gimmick and you have to make some adjustments, who knows? It is full automatic calibration, just like all of the other ones. The velocity is the same. The acceleration is the same. When it comes to the temperature though, it's kind of on the high end, but it also has an active chamber heating, which only the Chidic Tech Q1 Pro had. So in that regard, this is up there with the Chidi Q1 Pro. It has a bunch of closed loop cooling fan systems and it has a built-in AI camera for monitoring, time-lapse and a bunch of other stuff. And it will be available in July. When it comes to the images, do they have big image previews? They do not. So the monitor is on the top. We have the poop shoot on the back, I would say. This is the ventilation that it also has and has LAN connectivity, if I believe. But we will take a look at all of those features. When it comes to building it, these are ABS plates. As for the front, maybe it's glass, but supposedly it just clips into place and you're ready to go. Out of all of the printers that I have gone through, this one has the maximum flow rate at 35 cubic millimeters per second. I don't really know what all of this means. Here we have the before and after. And to be honest, the before does not look bad to me. But the top one on the after does look better. Then they have seamless connectivity. So you can also control multiple artillery printers using just their app. When it comes to nozzle, it's hard and steel, so that's good. It can pretty much print everything because it's in the same category as the Chiditech Q1. Here they also mentioned the platform temperature, so the build plate 120, so that is also high. And the product dimension, I think this one is one of the highest ones. So I guess it's not that high. It's pretty much the same as Cobra S1 and the Elegoo CC, but it is a little bit wider. Now here you can then click on this link and this PDF to get more information. So this is the product page. It would be nice if the LCD could be maybe positioned down. So here they have foreign object detection. Then I guess this is spaghetti code detection. Then they have filament detection sensor and auto cutoff mode. They have three fans, hot end, auxiliary. This one does look like one of the laptop fans. So I imagine it's really loud. Then this one too is kind of tiny. So on the loudness side of things, this printer could be loud, at least out of the box. Then they have dual-sided flexible plate. Again, no idea what this all means, but you can leave comments down below to give me a little bit of explanation. Mm -hmm. This stands out a little bit, so it has its own operating system, meaning that it's probably closed source, which is a downside, but kind of expected for a low cost operating machine, I would guess. 
So they have easy bed leveling. Again, this is the precision that you can see what you get like. Not that the image is bigger. The after is definitely a lot better. You also have resume and power outage like all of the other printers. Now, so basically that you can print everything that you would want. Let's see some specs, the body, the build volume, mainframe is diecast aluminium and aluminium profiles and the shell is ABS. So the sides are ABS and we do have glass in the front. Though what kind of glass he does not mention. Most likely tempered though. The hot end is 80 watt ceramic heating, nozzle hard and steel, 320 temperature detachable hot end, yes. And then we have cooling system and filtration. And as I said, we have a bunch of fans. As for the filter, it's honeycomb activated carbon filter for internal and external circulation. Then we have the speeds. As I said, pretty much every printer has this. If they can print at the highest speeds possible, kind of doubtful, at least not with good quality. But as I mentioned, it does have the highest flow rate. So auto leveling support does have it. Vibration control compensation does have it. AL camera, maybe they meant AI, who knows. So it has time lapse, surface detection, foreign object detection, and communication is over Wi-Fi. Hopefully it also has USB and maybe LAN connectivity and all of the different support materials. And now let's go to the specs. So this is just two pages. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we have print accuracy as the other ones 0.1 millimeters. Transmission ratio does not tell me much, but maybe this means if the gears are standard and easily to replace. If you needed some of the shelf parts, rated voltage from 100 to 240 volt AC. And when it comes to the wattage, I don't know why they do not have it specified at the top. The wattage is about 1150 watts. And I would imagine that is for 200 volts, maybe 220 volts. So what kind of watts you would get for a low voltage? Maybe half of that. Now they also specify some LED inside. Communication Wi-Fi. So the AI camera has time lapse, surface detection, foreign object detection, storage 8 gigabytes plus 8 gigabytes of memory on the SD card. You have the touch screen and the PC application. So here we have the temperature listed in one section. So 320. 120 and 60. So it is definitely up there with the Chidi. Now here it mentions the package weight. I guess this is the whole package, but not just the device on its own. It has auto leveling, filament runout, empty print detection, what else? Screen is touch screen, supported files, STL, OBJ, and 3MF. Not the best when it comes to the supporting files. In this case, I would compare the Artillery M1 Pro to Elegoo CC and the GD Tech Q1 Pro. And these two do have more supporting files. When it comes to software compatibility, it has Urca Slicer, which is good. And it has its own Artillery Slicer, which may be just based on the Urca Slicer. As for the software updates, it has over the air and the SD card. So that's it for the specs. Now I do have to give props to Artillery M1 Pro. They do have listed a lot of specs. Basically the only two that I did not find based on this list is the actual net weight. So the weight of just the device. Actually the connectivity itself, they only have it listed as Wi-Fi. So those are two things. The multicolor, it does not mention if it will have one. So maybe three things. And one option that is also easily missed in this table is the noise. So four things in total that they did not include in the tech specs. 
but just by the specs alone, I would say that this printer is the best. Will it actually be the best? I guess we'll find out in July. That's it for this video. If you have any thoughts on this printer, the other ones that I have posted, or other ones that I actually don't know about, let me know in the comments down below. And we'll do something else in the next one.